Welcome to Leon in Mexico for round 17 of the MXGP World Championship. Last year, this was a track that riders loved. Let's see how it shapes up in 2015. Tyler Rattray, number 28, Monster Energy Kawasaki. Thomas Covington, number 64, and I for Team Monster Energy Kawasaki. On board here then, 90 metres or so down to turn one here at Leon. Past the Fox hole shot, swinging through the left hand up over a slight rise into turn two. Expect there to be a lot of ruts through this right hand up. Eventually opening up over another crest. A large roller going into turn three. And turn three being a 180 left hand turn. Exit the circuit there. Over the next roller through the very fast right sweeper over another single and then on towards the first monster energy jump more like a double into a, another single but you can take it as one big tabletop through the left on the gas over the tabletop in the opposite direction and then through the right and then this is where the circuit starts to get interesting over the dragon back choice of lines through there as well four on the way up another two on the way down and then these waves continue right the way through the next right hand turn Eventually, the circuit opens up again over the 21 metre long Ippon tabletop jump. Then we go left, over a slight roller, over the Monster Energy waves in the middle, and then the furthest corner away from the start line, right from the grandstand, double or a single, or a major triple. And then up into this left-hander, turn 11, on the gas down towards turn 12, over a slight floater into this off-cambered right-hander. Seems to go on forever, especially when you're in those ruts. Through the next left, again, a choice of lines. Over the double, between the trees, and then we go left. This is where Tixier and Tonkov crashed last year. It's no longer a tabletop, but just a nice crest. Through the 180 right, this is the penultimate turn. Over a small double, and then quite a big tabletop into the final corner. Some riders will scrub and go tight to the inside. Then the final straight on the track takes the riders past pit lane. Through this slight kink, over the Monster Energy finish line jump. The riders then commence another lap as they head down the start straight. The race here last year has gone down in paddock folklore. The duel for the title in 2014 couldn't have been tighter between Jordi Tixier and Jeffrey Herling. One year on and the race for the championship is actually closer. And the two MX2 dogs are in the fight and ready for a scrap. desperately wants to be the first Honda motocross world champion since Frederick Bollet in 2000 on his 250 two-stroke and Jonas he's come so far this year you wouldn't believe it. is buzzing with two rounds four races and a hundred points to go mx2 is about to lift the roof here in mexico both jonas and geyser were in great spirits as they joined 15 other mxgp stars in a pickup parade around the city on friday spreading a bit of mxgp love before the serious stuff began
A huge crowd turned out to see the guys, but is Jonas flustered by all the attention and pressure? No, no. Oh, that's just another race. For sure I'm going to do the best and, uh, you know, that uh, I think many people think that I cannot do it. So, I'll try to prove that I'm wrong. Last year I was, uh, I was a completely different guy. Now I more grow up. Also, like, Stefan and also my physical trainer, really, they help me mentally so much that, uh, that all together it, it, it brings me to the next level. He certainly seemed to be on another level in qualifying practice as he rocketed to the top of the field by more than a second over Tim Geiser. It was all about those two and they really stamped their authority on the MX2 field, coming home with the first and second gate picks for the qualifying race. But this fight has deep roots as it's not the first time these two teenagers have scrapped with each other. Yeah, we know each other. We was racing, you know, uh, together in 65, 85, 125. So almost all all career we was riding together, you know. We was a uh, rival. You know, just try to go out there and uh, have fun, you know. Try to make two good starts. Also important will be qualification race today. So try to make a yeah good qualification race to have a really good gate pick for tomorrow. It was actually Jonas who got the best start with all the bikes struggling for power in the altitude of Mexico. Jonas and his Red Bull KTM seemed to handle it the best as he rode away from the pack. Geiser started fourth and finished fourth and the Slovenian wasn't able to do anything about Covington and Lieber ahead of him. The KTM had the upper hand, but Geiser didn't stop trying until the end. But race day would bring something very different for the two riders. Rain. Lots of it on Saturday night meant race one was going to be a really heavy mudder, where the only skill that really matters is the ability to stay on the bike for the full moto. The riders headed down to the first turn. It wasn't a bad start for Paul Jonas, slightly better than Tim Geiser, who looked across to see the 41 running up the inside of him. But there was drama at the first corner as Petrov, Gio, Van Donik, and Kulas all ran wide, allowing Covington to sneak the Fox hole shot. But he too ran wide, and that opened the door for Paul Jonas in what were very difficult conditions indeed. Jonas chose not to go out in the morning warm-up session, didn't go out on the sighting lap, and was riding blind, but pulling clear of Max Anstey and Benoit Pacherel. Tim Geiser, meanwhile, was in fourth position, but then lost a position when he fell on the finish line jump at the start of lap three. Thomas Covington made his way through, but Geiser very lucky to rejoin the race with his shoulder intact. All the while, Geiser knew that with Jonas ahead of him, that championship lead was starting to disappear. Julian Lieber had one of those days, unfortunately. This one of many crashes, taking him out of eighth place, but Geiser in the closing stages started to reel in the American Thomas Covington in a battle for fourth position. But then he pushed too hard, ran wide, made one or two mistakes. So too did Paul's Jonas and almost fell in exactly the same place as Tim Geiser earlier on in the race. But he managed to hold on and take his first ever win in MX2 and close to within four points of the frustrated Tim Geiser. For the second race, the sun came out, the circuit was drying, which meant the riders would have a completely different racetrack to the one they had experienced in race one. Jonas and Geiser both focused on the job at hand. And as they roared down the start straight into turn one, it was Jonas who grabbed the advantage as seen by Thomas Covington, but it all went wrong for the 41. He lost the front, he crossed the Fox hole shot line but then he was hit by Geiser and Lieber. And that opened the door for Thomas Covington to sneak through 
and lead the way. But Jonas was hit hard. He was able to rejoin the race, but riding over himself possibly. He was already up to seventh at the end of the first lap. Found himself onto the rear wheel of one of the Yamahas, but then it all went spectacularly wrong for Jonas, who used all of his acrobatic skills. He tucked and rolled on the landing, and it all looked like it was over at that point. Well, that's certainly what the KTM boys thought down in pit lane as Jonas returned for some much needed repairs. With a helmet full of tears, Jonas bravely rejoined the race, but it was Covington who led on his Monster Energy Kawasaki by a comfortable margin over Tim Geiser. Calvin Valandrin, riding in his first Grand Prix of the year, was running up with the big boys in third, but then started to fall back as 33 Julian Lieber went through, so too did the number six. But Anstey, a lap down after problems on the first lap. His championship surely over now. Valentin Guillaume made amends for his mistakes in race one, got himself into four. But it was all about Thomas Covington in race two. He rode his luck on the final lap, but he was able to hang on and take his first ever race win in MX2. He also secured him the overall Grand Prix victory as well. Guys was second, Patrick was third. Yeah, I didn't know I won the overall until they told me to go up to the podium and I was like, which one do I stand on? And in the fight for the championship, Tim Geiser extends his lead by a further five points over Paul Jonas as we head to the USA for the final round of the season. But it was all smiles for Thomas Covington, Tim Geiser and Benoit Pacharel this weekend in Lyon. Last time out in Assen, we crowned our 2015 MXGP world champion, Roman Febra. He's a laid back and hugely self-reliant rider and 461 has improved himself in all areas since 2014. And in doing so, has surprised a whole lot of people around the world. Here's our look at the new MXGP world champion. to me uh, since I was young I, I dream about that every day you know so uh, when you get your first title when you realize your dream it's uh, something really special and you know I know that um, everybody cannot realize this dream you know since I was I, I, I'm, I'm young uh, I ride also the race like this on the BMX track and uh, the skate park also. So uh, I'm more fan of skate park because I like to, to do some tricks and everything on the BMX. I ride uh, during the winter, um, but uh, not during the season because yeah, you can have some small injury. I was not looking the other rider, but just uh, to do my race alone. And uh, yeah, I start beginning of the season, I start like this because I, I knew that I wasn't ready. So, uh, I've, like in Qatar, I could pass uh, Vilopoto. For, for myself, when I ride, I don't care if it's Caroli or 
someone else and and I think that's the also the positive point you need to have because yeah if you are scared from some rider then it's coming more difficult. The first race and also in, in Thailand the second race you know to to see the difference between the other rookies uh, you could already see a big gap between uh, Romain and, and all the other guys that stepped up from the MX2 class. Thailand was an early season high point with a race two top three finish. But there was one race that really caught everyone's attention and it started with a bang, Majora. I remember when uh, I jump, I, I take the takeoff and I jump uh, on the side, I say, oh, that's not good. And, I was thinking, yeah, if I'm not injured by this crash, uh, yeah, I'm really lucky. After I could ride with the bike, uh, the handlebar bent and without front brake. That was really special, but the best moment, uh, for sure, it was to get the title, but the best race, uh, it was in France for my first uh, GP victory was, and at home, it's always uh, amazing to win at home, so uh, the ground was just amazing. From far, it's the best moment uh, in the season. Race wins and championships bring rewards. What has Roman Fevre got his eye on? I will not uh, buy something really special, just maybe go in holiday because uh, the last few years I didn't win. So uh, for sure with my girlfriend we'll take some nice holiday somewhere. When you get the title and when you was the best on, in a season, that's, yeah, mentally changed something, you know. You know that what you did before, it's uh, on a good way. So uh, I will work on that for sure. This year it came, uh, the result came so fast and uh, I again make a big step on my progression, on the speed, on everything. So I feel that I'm not on, on my limit, you know, I can still push myself uh, and, and be more fast and consistent. So I think that's a good point. Um, yeah, because I, I think every year I can, I, can, uh, I can do one step further and uh, be, be better. taking his third qualifying race win of the season on Saturday. Pretty much meant nothing because the rains meant the track was completely different. Dean Ferris took the Fox hole shot but ran wide, allowing Glenn Colden off a route through up the inside. And that's what happened to Sean Simpson as Paul Lamb made a mistake on a jump, took Ferris with him, Simpson was through into third. Tough conditions meant riders were making one or two little mistakes. As the track started to dry out, Glenn Koldenoff, the race leader, was the first to fall. He remounted in eighth. But that handed the advantage to Roman Fevre as Dean Ferris came in for running repairs on his overheating Husqvarna. His teammate Max Nagel was all over the place. And Sean Simpson survived this lucky escape by an over-exuberant track worker. With Paul Ann up front, the two Hondas battled over third. Gautier Paulin though started to make one or two mistakes as his teammate Bobrashev started to close in. And eventually Gautier Paulin succumbed to the pressure from the big Russian. These two riders fighting for second overall in the title race. Glenn Koldenhoff recovered well to get himself back into fifth place on his Rockstar Energy Suzuki. 
Dean Ferris also had a good second half of the race to get sixth by the time he crossed the finish line. Adam Sterry, riding 811 in his first ever appearance in MXGP, had a tough time eventually coming home in 12th. But Roman Fevre once again was in a class of his own, pulling more than 40 seconds clear of Simpson on the Hitachi Revo KTM. He's one in the hard pack, he's one in the sand. And Roman Fevre proving that he can ride the mud as well as he raced to his 13th race victory of the season. Simpson was second, Bob Rochef third, Paul Ant and Koldnov in top five. Max Nagel was fastest out of the blocks. But as we've seen so many times this weekend, after taking the Fox hole shot, the German ran wide, allowing Paul Ann to sneak up the inside, taking Roman Fevre with him as Sean Simpson battled just inside the top 10. Tyler Rattray was chasing Bobrashev and Simpson in the early stages of the race, but quickly fell back to eighth. And for the first time in a long time, the battle up front involved the two top riders in the world, but it wasn't long before Roman Fevre found his way past the Frenchman, Gauthier Paulin, leaving him to deal with the chasing pack. The battle for second involved seven riders, all of whom have won Grand Prix races this year. Simpson was the first to react, making this pass on Glenn Koldenhoff to put himself up into fourth and he was quickly up into third after passing Jeremy Van Horbeek on the Yamaha. Gary Bobrashev also went through on Koldenhoff and followed the Scott through towards the top positions in the race. Bobrashev found his way neatly down the inside of Jeremy Van Horbeek, got himself up into fourth and continued to follow Sean Simpson as they both closed in on Gauthier Paulin. Tyler Rattray having one of his last races of his career eventually got into seventh place as Sean Simpson proving he was in no mood for hanging around. An aggressive but fair pass on Gauthier Paulin got him into second and once again the two Hondas were locked in battle as they chased over third. And it was once again the HRC duo that provided the fireworks. Bobrashev, a great move down the inside of his teammate Paul Ant. Paul Ant then retaliated, but it all went wrong for the 21. Too much grip, and the Frenchman was cartwheeling down the track. He picked himself up in ninth. But once more, Roman Fevre raced to the chequered flag to secure his fourth double moto victory of the season and his seventh Grand Prix win. Next stop, the hills of California and Glen Helen.